Kaka Kamsel Yai Boro Nomba Nainu National GSM Operator Kibaro Felentale Gambia Banko Kanjang Sako Milka Koleaka Ki Internet Ola Karula Nyim Banko Kanjang Gamsele Kukuto Nafe Gambia Kuto Konojang The fastest data network Gambia Banko Kanjang Star 302 Star Amount Half Seno Lapije Flexi Data Bundle Bundle Jama Saya Chimpaje Drink Atom Fok Koyne Ebe Dao Da Network Ose Staraje Wato Tije A Jam Uman Sia Koto Boy Faye Je Whatsapp Viber FaceTime Hana Nga Tana Facebook Insta Twitter Snapchat Gamsele Is The New Look Mobile Ol Ni Mobile Ol Na Mobile Ol Be Gamsele Live I know na bundle o for flexo Gambia la number nine o You are dealing with professionals Customer satisfaction o Customer la satisfaction o Stewart and Co. Solicitors A legal excellence firm in London That can help you with all aspects of your legal work if you are looking at immigrating to the United Kingdom, Stewart & Co. can help you to set up business, buy houses in the UK, and will deal with all your legal works from start to finish. For all your general immigration work, we can help you with that as well. If you apply for any form of visa, where the student visas, settlement visas, marriage visas, or a child wanting to come to the United Kingdom to settle with the family, we can help you to achieve your goals. Stewart and Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm specializing in conveyancing, immigration, litigation, family law, personal injury, licensing, no win, no fee. Contact us today at www.sk-solicitors.com. In today's world, everything imaginable is on the internet, which is amazing. And to find anything, it is easy. But that's not the case for Lamy. His standard internet connection is frustratingly slow, unable to focus on important things in life. He can't stream a video or search anything. He is fed up with messages like address is not found, timeout connection, and Internet Explorer cannot find web page. That's when his friend Fatima introduces him to Gamtel. At Gamtel, we provide viable, cost-effective, and sustainable internet solutions to businesses and homes. With our nationwide fiber broadband connectivity through EcoOne Gambia Project, you can now say goodbye to slow internet. We provide quality services, blazing speed, and amazing customer services. All these at affordable price. Be like Lani and start using Gamtel broadband internet today. Gamtel. Creating a brighter future in communication. Sophie, me ola bu sel te ner. Bah na ti halal ak mak yep. Am na calcium, iron, protein, and vitamin you bury. Sophie, full cream powder milk la. Am na 20 gram, 200 gram, and 400 gram. Koko nyam do to ko bayi. Sophie, proudly Gambian. For us, every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. To make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets with a liberal air transportation policy. That daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators and for a highly ranked tourist destination the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831-4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily. 
channel manu ba yeng my channel ma ba. Kani wali mala jo sese bare mda wela. Jalal manu bare go mala. Sini na gane. Ki de namu ko jo khibar gima de gisiye. Wow loto gie. Wow na ko ne al khames buneka ag dimas buneka. Deng tan na juro min namu ba si jakwal bi. Kok ganja juro min namu ba tegal nai lah hora dan plus thousand. Mana am temu juro ne ag nutek. Wow. Wai juro min namu ba ida hora mango. Si fe kene na amu juro min namu ba mango am ganja nienti namu ba mango. Yo di nai la jo bonus four. Donor lah. Bonus four. Ba wadas nade. Alte nabo jo talata Allah bak ajuma. Ni jo gie nawa benen jackpot. Ne kugi am nienti namu ba lokalo. Ni tegal fifty thousand dollars. Manam juro fuki juni. Wai na gis nabo ame nienti yu mango. Ni jo hala tam bonus tiri. Aku. Wai na kame ko. Gis nabo Gambia. Gemi bari nanti. Wai gis nabo B. Girin lah kame ko. Wah kame ko buba kaba. Fener four dah bonus fee. Dengan per. Kamu lawak hip dekat ni. Wah, kamu kalau malay kawan. Makan kanan wal dekat lagi. Ia masih sekarang budi dia kamu ada goma lah. Dengan mai kompol. Mandi di kompol. Nain jam jauh. Kanan melu ngah. Mana nena ngalai lawak. Nena laku kompol laku kau je. Aduh juga. Ag loto game. Ag ay bonus sama kewal lah mui bari. Direct lah. Different. Assalamualaikum. Okay, you dah lenfici. Penen episode of Kirfat. Comme nous l'avons fait avec Alhamis Bounéka, nous avons fait avec les Kélifa, les Kélifa, nous avons fait avec les Kélifa. Et nous avons eu le plaisir d'Adi, nous avons fait avec les Kélifa, qui sait que, Mashallah, la Gambie a été fait dans le monde. Il a été fait dans l'affaire de Tango, qui est la voix de Rizine. Les Gambie ont été fait dans le monde, et nous avons 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 fait dans le monde. Si on est dans la Gambie, 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 pour donner l'honorable Khalifa Salafi, dans Kirfatou, l'honorable Welcome to Kirfatou, on est dans la Gambie, dans la Gambie, dans Kirfatou. Je suis très heureux, je suis content pour Théophie. Merci beaucoup. Dadi, comme je l'ai dit, si on est dans la coalition, il faut que tu te dises. From 2016, from 2006, Gambia tried a coalition demuton. You never catch it. The Democrats are here to jam it. But then we have to be able to dig, dig. Gambia and the people who are politicians, the people who are not united together. What time am? Can we find accord? You bolo. You never catch it. Gambia is not united. The house is not united. Coalition am. But then you Gambia am. You am big to learn. Not that all can achieve what we have. Mujite wanlo, boka chini ya hamne, la fanya ligom na ako, ba tei soga am, kona dadi amne inbekte lol dalal onerebo alifasa. Thank you, Fatu. I think words cannot express his contribution towards New Gambia, but his contribution socio politically goes way beyond New Gambia. Mr. Sala, or Honorable Sala, should I say, should have been around, um, have been around for the longest of time. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes I do wonder, is he a teacher or a politician? Mm -hmm. He acts more like a teacher than a politician to me. Mm -hmm. Why? He is good at delivering messages to the masses. As a politician, you need consensus building. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes, principle-wise, I don't think he's flexible enough. And um, looking at Coalition 2016, I call it an unholy alliance. Mm. Yes, that's my philosophy. Mm. The only thing they had in common in totality was the removal of Yaya Jame, full stop, nothing else. I have high regard for the gentleman. I respect his point of view, albeit sometimes I have a divergent view, but at least he is true to form as per his beliefs. So that's one thing I do have respect and admiration for his beliefs. And is his beliefs what's going to take Gambia out of the mess we find ourselves? That's debatable, depending on your orientation and school of thought. But as a person, as a politician, he is true to form. Like him, hate him, he has his convictions. Oli, ona rebo alifasal. Mune kwa kwa hamne, nyumbani nyumbani ilaite, kenyi nko eni kirvat. Gambia ni sahla dega chimo, wajji barina, limfili ge kenyi mno kofa. Wai Gambia ni bugani nyumbani dega chimo, bubah na 
saka tu masi jamano juu tuloni. Ah, uh, uh, new niore, mm -hmm. honourable. I mean, lima pleasure la pumu man matog, bemo na toga, Mr. Honourable Halifa Sala, konda na si torop 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 pumu mm -hmm. na toga yao same platform. Mm -hmm. Wai well, komuniko fatu wa hesi beginning bi time impass bi time bi nyep nyoe be dako yao la nyep gisol. Wai mm -hmm. well, man gis bobo si sma gis gis nemo kogi same moi. You only choose on from the lead. Mm. The Japanese and some Kenyan talk on some hidden time be some didn't show kokune ah do sanga mofi talk mofi talk. So coalition be because ham na ne misa sala honourable my one send spokesperson. Mm. Why tibir watan be some ham na didn't gina dem why man the mo buka just like direct fun si dore si coalition be because it's my understanding why kune kada fa is one seventy delegates. Didn't get a first part. Um, mom, come politikam pour jangal nila du bari time jawara time jaya jame bu gon rek honorable alifa sala bo ni yo ba pare rek ñu dugg ci lolu ni nga dundé né ka opposition for almost ñata years time jawara ba tay lolu naka la melon ak ba tay ñu tollu fi ñu ne ñu gambia ndere jeuf hmm da fa melni yeen ñep seen wax yi andana Sunyoi set reu, duni kumu ne gise chiboti benenit, te duni kumu na kame chilame ni benenit, mo atahien sen lige amana, ndakte nyep pengien wara dalal, deklu chi nyep, nit ni muna sege, e fanda dege ge fetu, munak dege dege sunyu duge chi politik. Dafa am fu mo jar man dama ne ka khale bun dawo fu ki ata jurom be na gyan na wala ma dam chi be na simposium club island school de ga stuk le ka michael de wa mo wa cho na gi nga kham ni 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 mom na ni tego won chi gyom fi ni judo ni ni tam chi sufi afrika ni na mom na ni su ni bopo be te ni ni de ka chi ne gi nga hi nek ci ciolo go xamne gi mbo len doonu nit ku ñu ku joge mbitim rew di ut ndam ci ñu nga bokkul ñu way askan danaka di nga am rus so ñu ngi ci soufi afrika bañ wax ne mom mom bopum lolu duggé man ci suma xol ne fok ma bokk ci ñu nga xamne dinañ sigilat rew afrika ndax ñun rek ñun lolu ci suñu xam xam ak suñu man man ndax rew ci xam xam ak man man rek mom nga ko mëna tabaxé mu mel ni lolu dogg la won ci man mbé bi ma dem amerique ci bopam fekk lolu ngi fess ci mo bop man demu ma ne ma nga outi degree pour rek jëriñu man gour fellu ma pour ma janga man ma liggéew suma bop dem won ci boarding school boarding school dina dan jok wetti waxtu ci suba ci seddaay bi ñoo oyé 20 degrees below zero dem jëlé ay lak di ñew pour ñu jël néew ci ñoom school bi mom la dining hall bi dan dundé yi ñuy jaayé man dama ñak pour jang kenn neewu ma xaliss pour ma jang ma joggé fa jéxal fofu ci ñaari at dem ci school of the ozarks fofu tam nonu la dañ am seen aéroport am seen lu nek may liggey fo xamna fi electricity dañ ko daan generate ci ndox mu ñuy tangal may liggey fofu itam pour fay suma school fees ma jéxal ci ñetti at dem ci howard university nak ngir haarama dañ nak pour jéxal master's phd wala ñip ci wat ci soufi gambia ñetti at la jéxal suma bachelor's degree duga xawat university 1976 non mbaru ci xaju len juddu waaw di jëm nak pour ut xam xam wa ndé xam xam bima doon am ci school ji gis na né nekku ton xam xam bé doon tax ma paréas pour liggéeyal afrika motax ñun ak yéneen doomi afrika 
ignore_time_segment_in_scoring ligue Muidoi. <hesitation> 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 <hesitation>
dedet lo yo la motax may wax ni fofu mo wara leer dañu ne kof nga ngour da na nga constitution da na nga republic te ñun dañu ne republic moy democracy bi nga xamne mo gëna mag ci kaw suuf ndax te bour amatu fa ñu ne republic moy ne nit ñu ñom mom doole ñom mom baat ñoy fal di folli lool la ñu waro na jangal school jangalu ñuko man jogi na fi bu dem america xawma luy constitution xawma luy republic xawma lu tax du wote te lool waro nañu ko jangal ci suñu school yi ndax ñew lañ bi 24 april 1970 ñu ne gambia mom la bopam wa suñu demé be tollu fofu nak war nañu jangal doomi gambia ñu xam momel gogu limu tek ni kon kenn du wax affaire xet fi mu nek ni passé lañu fofu wa mu melni bon bi gañewé daane constitution bobu ba pare taxawal nguur go xamne gi ñom ñoy wax ne ñoy nek ca bop ba dikri mo nek ca kaw baati rew nek ca suuf nga ñoy bugg ñu bok ci nguur gogu ñun mi daan jangal nit ñi nit ñi ñom mom baat ñom mom doole xam nga ñaar yoy mu nuta and ñu ne len dedet da ngeen wara xuus nak ñu delu waat ci constitution delu waat ci wote ñu japp ñu fi ñana yu ko ciow ne ga yi do yangi ni dedet ñun ño xex ak lolu dem ci koot yi dem ba mu jeex ñu continuer di pousse be rew mi dal di egat ci constitution bo xamne bi dako lañ pour am constitution mu nek ca kaw decree xam nga lolu moy achievement bi manke te constitution ba nga fa ndax te ñom ñoko isi wala ñu ne bété nak constitution bi bu mo nek ca kaw decree nak ci suuf xam nga lolu ol bëtté ko na wa ñu ne bon itam nak wote war na ñoo ah daana lañ yëna parti wala yëna parti mën na ñoo jog ah xana bon ñun suñu liggéey tax na ba ay parti mën na jogal ci kaw rew mi dal di campagne at wa ñun ñu continuer campagne at pour mëna jël rew te liñ doon wax gañ ci jamono jojo moy ne ñu daana won constitution su ñëwé ba fi mu nek ni ngeen dënkat leen rew constitution bu wudu mëna jëm kanam dafa gën di daanu bon nak sét leen ñu nga xamni ñun ci jamono ji biñ daane nguuri jawara jamono bu fekk do ngi am daraja ci ndaw yi mbolé fo dem ci rew mi ndaw ya ngi duplu won ci doy wandi bi coup d'etat bi xewé rek ñu la revolution amna ndaw yi ne ñun dañ wara bokki biñ bokk ñu ne ñun ñu ay ñi kel sen affaire kel xamuko ya yow soldat ñi xamé ñu nguur dañ daana nguur gi pour doy légui do ngi baña bokki ci ñom bon nak doy kay mom paré wul pour pour liggéey loolu so déclo AFPRC sen kaddu ya loon lañ daan loon lañ daan sanni né do ngi ne o lañ leen wane paré wul pour liggéey waaw fofu la fofu lañu doore so len bokkon sax hejna mu tane hejna ngeen munu na dimbele nekkon nañ ndaw yo xamne dañ ñu ak xadara taxna be tay rew mi tollu fi wara tollu fi tollu ni waye lolu dinañ ci di dinañ ci gëna yaatal ci kanam ñu continuer doy di participer ci ci elections waaw election yi am waaw ci presidential elections waaw ça ne lu ñu national assembly ñu am ben 6 waaw ñu continuer di continuer gambie ni soxla bolo ñu dem ba 1996 gambie ñu ne ah dega dega ciono bari na ci 2006 sorry gambie ni ñu ne soxla nañ pour gambie ni nek bena soxla nañ pour political parties yi ñew pour form a coalition ndax ñu mëna gënë fi lu fi nek parce que definitely time bobu gambie ni sonu nañ ah nga bëggon rek tuti nga waxtaan wax ñu ci coalition bobu moy naan waaw waaw xam nga tuti soku baye xel moy ne biñu joggé ci 1996 elections yi ñen ñu door nak né doy mo ñu issel constitution bu bon ñoo waxul né decree mo nekkon ca ko constitution nak ci suuf da ñu légui ñun fexé nañ ba lolu ol bëtté ko té taxaw nañ nañ té kenn wotal ñu ñu né doy mo issel constitution doy ak soldat yi ben lañu won campagne bi ci ñene ñi nga xamné ñu ngi soxla ngu door nak di attaqué doy ci fan gu nekk mu melni ñun suñ liggéey dal di nobbu wane 2002 ñu delu wa ci election dal di am ñaari togu biñ amé ñaari togu xam ngeen ni UDP boy koton nañ election bobu xam ngeen ni sheriff di bay itam té so sété mbir mi bi constitution bi taxawé section 25 dal né ku nekk mënatu nako xagn pour mu am parti parti yu baanon ñun ñu leena wax di leen jangal né dem leen ca code ba 
ndax mën gëna dem xay ko wala né kèn mënu né la téré téré taxaw wandi dem ñu won mu melni lolu mo won jëriñu constitution bobu wandi biñ démé bay ñëw ci 2001 election bi presidential election gaay yi xamné mënatu ñu téré gaay yi ñu on ban lén so mcp taxaw bi nga xamné né ñëw nañ ci 2001 xam nga jëmu nañu and ci jam and bobu ñun liñ ci waxon nak doy moy né nañu and moy liñ waxé 2016 ñun non lañu waxon wala dañu nit sax bolé wuñ ci ñu dem def seen nité xadialo sherif dal di mer dem taxaw bi taxawé gagnewul wandé ñi dem nak ci national assembly election mu dem and ak aprc lolu mu ngi tiyé na ñëlé ppp mom lañ xagn li nga xamné aqam la ndax moy won opposition party bi gëno na mag ci force republic so lolu mer lo ko né gëna joxuñ ko ci rëm légui mo xaaramu dem and ak eprc wala ñoy itam duggal pexé nañu ñu ncp taxaw ci touri ncp né mbolé ño xamné ñu wara taxawal ncp nañ dem taxawal eprc so mu ñu ndé xam nga lolu dal dina am eprc gëna am doole ci légui député yi et su fekké né udp taxawal la ci at mom xej na la doon am betel gu bare bare ndi te cheikh fek euh dal la dar la eprc ñom ñu boycott election ba ñu ñu am ci ñaari togu gannaaw ñaari togu bobu politique bi xejam ndax te coalition bi gaay taxawalon ncp jpp ak ppp ñew boot itam nit ku taxaw ci udp mu melni bobu da fuul tasaro bam tasaro nak mu ngi melni fi rew mi djuplu won moy ne fok ni ñi xalaata ban parti la ñu wara andal wax di ga neex yalla ci jamono joju nak doy amon na daraja ndax te ñun continue nañ be bokk ci pan african parliament ñu melni suñu demone di campagne ni ñu wara campagne pour ud nit du doon xala jafé pour ñu yok daraja parti bi wande ci atlante lañ ñu wo ñu dem waxtane gaay kontan lo ca waxtan bi nga xamne kaddu yu fa gar ñu o ñu itam nak ca bor ne wa yeen parti opposition ni ta ngeen fexe ngeen anda ndax ngeen am doole ñun ñu ne tek wa ne gaay dem ba ci kanam ne e suñ tané ki nga xamne moy khalifa sall am nañ yaakar ne def ko coordinator am nañ yaakar ne affaire yi fok mu mëna and fofu lan na affaire na doore biñ ma tané ma wax suñ parti bi né ah tané nañ ñu fi dé té li suñ ko bajé lu yaqu dañu né ñun ñoko yaq wala suñ parti bëggu ton ci jamono joju ñu 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 wañi ñun suñu katam ndax té ñun doon dem ci jamono joju wa mu melni ci lañ del ci wat fi ma waxtana njiti opposition yeb ne la ñaari façon ngi and mo mëna am ben and moy ñu xaar ba juroom ben wër bala election ñu sé ban parti moy mëna am daraja bu mëna o ñele ñele boot leen ma ñu boot ko ndax parti bu nek bu ñu la dund ci fekke bala election bi jot wala ñu door legi taxawal parti bo xamne ñep dañu nek ci ronam mu nek ombrella parti kuy taxaw taxaw ci touri ko parti bobu do taxaw ci sa touri parti tok fa juroomi at gannaaw juroomi at yi do taxawat te do far farlo ndax ñu mëna am doorin bu bess ci bi waxtan wo wala ñu nek be d'accord ñepp signé ñu sos na na taxaw juroom be di bay election gagné ñeenti bay election so compter popular vote bi itam na la na da opale won wane nak ñu dem ba ci kanam mu am parti yu genn euh ne mënatu ñu tok ci na euh lolu tasaro motax bañ démé election bay itam ñu daanu wat ah am na ñu wax né biggé sa party lolu motax ah lolu ndax lolu moy won ca lan moy sa xalaat ku nek dafa am bugg bugg bopam te buñ téré kenn mu am bugg bugg bopam ci politique ndax te doomi rew so waré nek président sa 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 cheikh la fa nga nek président wala so xassé tok rek lolu pexé la biñ togué sa pexé so jitalé benn parti moy parti bo jakko bañ yépp biñ la wotel 
te yeneen parti itam suñu sété né parti bobu nga jital nga nga xamné bu ñun parti bobu yé ba tax ñu bokk ci yeneen parti duñ dem nga tel ko koku dafa jafé pour nga gagner élection so gisé parti nga jital ko dafa fekk né dafa am doole pour dem ndax ñeneen ñu suñu andu sax mom di la def a su ko defé koku nga anda ak mom dem na nga ñak anda ak mom dem na motax ñu lay ñi di wara né nañ anda ak mom ndax ñun tam ñu am ci taranga ga lolu moy issi façon yi alliance bobu wala alliance bi nga xamni nit ki amul doole pour jëlal bopam koku mom ya nga ut mbolo nga ut pexé ma moy mbolo pexé mi nak moy won ñun pexé ñu gis won moy né su féké la won nga né nañ am umbrella parti kenn du ko gisé né parti do sangam la ku la neex mën nga fa taxawal soko taxawalé nit ñi duñ ko gisé né ki parti bu ma bañol la wala nit ki ma bañol dañu né ah ki kay suñu nit ñi yépp moko dar wa su ko défé koku duñ ko mëna wotel té xejna sax bugu loko xejna sax bugu lo parti am lolu moy won pexé bi lolu moy won pexé bi tadi ñuy dox di dox ba 2016 gambie soxla another coalition halifa nek ci ñi nga xamné ñu oté ko ñu coordinate ko ba tay Gambia. Once again, I will go back to my statement mm -hmm. of the, the unholy alliance. Okay. See, we must not be apologetic about our political situation as a country. Mm -hmm. Gambia is more divided today than the time of Yaya Jame. True. Sure. We had a common denominator, and that denominator was Jame. Mm -hmm. After that, it was everyone for themselves. and god for all of us. Wow. And if we are sincere, mm -hmm. we must first accept that that's the Gambian reality politically. Mm -hmm. They formed a coalition. Mm -hmm. It was expedient and it was needed to take Jame out and that was the end of it. Oh. They don't have a cohesive program that they want to achieve collectively because they're divergent in terms of views, mm -hmm. orientation, and ideology did the coalition serve a purpose it only served one purpose taking jame out now jame is in our past what's next for gambia institutional reform and transformation national transformation can the coalition do that my answer is a flat no because as far as i'm concerned i haven't seen a coalition i'm being honest mm -hmm. there is nothing like a coalition because it's not working in harmony or it's not synchronized honorable sala has been accorded the opportunity to be a pivotal player in a coalition government for reasons best known to him he didn't opt out but he decided to go to parliament mm -hmm. and yes he believed he will be more effective in a parliamentary role more than in an executive role in cabinet mm -hmm. discretion once again it's his choice and i respect it mm -hmm. my problem My singular problem is is honorable sala a theoretical politician or a pragmatist why i believe that gambia is at a crossroads now and not only should we have all hands on deck but the voice of reason should not only prevail but be the change agents and the change champions in ushering the new dispensation we are yet to have a new dispensation Gambia is in search of an identity and national identity and that national identity can only come out when voices of reason do come out now honorable sala is he standing up to that task or is he playing political maneuvering for subsequent election because he doesn't want to be part of what he may deem as a failed arrangement or dispensation today no. that's my take on the way that Honorable Sala is handling I'm issues. going to take my first commercial break ah. here. <laughs> When we come back, waxtan bi dinañ koy yaata. Man ak ñeneen Gambia, ñu ne lan motax Honorable Sala nekku ci cabinet bi te ñu soxla ko fa lool. Mu nekk Gambian bo xamne diga diga bañu toge Gambia mit ñu soxla voice of reasoning. He was there. Te Gambia daf ko soxla right now. Yes in national assembly bi waye dege dege buñ ko amone ci ngour gi gambien yu bari yakam yakaro nañ ne han ligue bi dina don gëna dox kon dari ñay bul fi ñew di leen jël sun force commercial break buñ delu ci rek ñu gëna yakal waxtaan bi Universal Properties 
the dynamic and most trusted agency in real estate and property management. We are here to make housing affordable, accessible for every Gambia, despite their financial status. What makes Universal outstanding in the market is our flexible payment plans. We set standards in sales and letting of quality properties, mortgage, leasing, rentals, property valuation, construction and many more. All our sites are fitted with social amenities such as schools, water, electricity, praying ground and a good road network. In Sukuta phase 1 and 2, Jambanjeli, Sanyang, Brikama, Lamendaranka, and Gunyur coming up soon. Doing business with Universal Properties, it's a very wonderful experience. Universal Properties, FIB House, Caraba Avenue. There are many who can't do small or big projects with the same dedication and commitment as we do. With the reputation as the leading printing company in the country, when it comes to major projects and innovative solutions, we always deliver in high quality thus receiving the trust and confidence of our clients. From the moment your order is placed to when it is delivered, we believe in exceeding expectations from the sales manager to the production team, the account manager, and the person delivering your material. We have state-of-the-art equipment and a highly experienced and competent workforce that enables us to deliver top quality work on time. At reasonable prices, we provide our clients with multiple solutions right from conceptualizing, designing, printing, binding, publishing, and distribution. For all your printing requirements, we are strategically located at the Sankumsila Highway, the Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation. We print what you desire. The Gambia Revenue Authority wishes to inform the general public that income earned from the letting or leasing of property is taxable as per the Income and Value Added Tax Act 2012. In this regard, the general public is hereby informed that payment of rental income tax is an obligation on any person who earns income from letting or leasing properties. All rental income earned from properties in the Gambia is subjected to rental income tax. There are two types of rental income tax. A residential rental income tax charged at the rate of 10% of gross rent received. Commercial rental income charged at the rate of 15% of gross rent received. It is important to note that failure to declare and pay rental income tax is illegal and punishable under the Income and Value Added Tax Act 2012. To pay your rental income tax, rush to the nearest GRA domestic tax office or any of GRA's designated banks. Remember to pay your taxes and on time. GRA, collecting revenue for national development. Uh, welcome back to Kirfat. Come, Nima Kohere, Gwindon Jelsin, Force Break B. Dedding a lal for Hamne. Gambian be yip feeling Bugonaham. A Gohalifa Wanachi. Yusani Carta. Collation with the how, Balanyo Sani Carta. Halifa, my fatty, Oje Jalo, political leaders nipsimuk. New Dog Gambia. No ni Japalelen. Gambia ni Japalelen. Badola bit the how. Kin ragalatut. Why yen yol and jock fit bo? Yen kilifay. Bangin jugin ah. Be the needle and the fee. Gambia me yup yup yun ah. Kilifay linden nyanti at yip yun nangogo. Day collision amna. Tan and Adam Abaro. Can hamuko on sa. Just for the reason, simple reason ne. Banko tan and yip anda. Nekachi ganao. Ni banyum sa. Ni what? Ni nige chilolu. Di wah ne ni refer lu buba haba. Role binga hamne. Current vice president bi. Halifa Sala role being played to make sure nip nekabena. Munikalo hame ken munuko fate. Table be seen in a new gamble, limo ko indi. Yusani karta, nutana adamaboro. Halifa Sala neka, official spokesperson. Mandal smotogon smoke your time when you ne press. Alaji mankala nip dan top. When ne press conference, right? Nebna Halifa Sala and genu. Gambian be time bo we nip. I'm interested in politics in Gambia. Tana bate, bo who politic kim la deglu. Mandamakuri by health, since showing you have a body of health, not a few issues. 
2000 3000 3000 views si politique si doxin lan moko indi liguey bi ngeen def ci lolu ñu dox di dox di dox ñu dégg ngour taxaw ñu nomé ministres té guñ khalifa sala ñep yu wax ñep mer ñu né waaw lu tax taanu khalifa sala ñi am ñu né dégg né ga si MOU bi whatever am agreement bi ngeen am parti bu nekk warna indi representative si cabinet bi ñu am ñu né dégg dégg Halifa jox nañ ko opportunity wara any member of his team why Halifa dafa opt out de pare indi wut any member of PDI's team ci cabinet bi mu ne ko lo xamne gamen yu bari ku melni man ak ñenen ñu ne ah non lolu nak digga 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 bi moy di force betrayal to the coalition lan nga respond ni wax lolu on rewu xal wa gis nga when it comes to bi ñoo tana man lolu daf ma jaxal te jaagana ko bu galatte wa because some understanding ko nek dafa indi 70 delegates wow why wow. um 70 delegates yo you know yo i guess ne yo not only yo some we pvp participate ku nek indi nga ñigi na sess yo naka nga dundé ñu sanni sa 70 yeb sanni lañ la like filu lo ne hina bitré nañ la oh like because man fa gom na ne ñep ku nek suñu ne kay len ku nek bu nga nek president te xam na ne ku nek sa bir camp yit da nga tana ñi nga olu pour nek president so ñu ñu taxaw adama baro am lu bari bari lolu ba nga xamne kep ko fa ici sa 70 fok na if i am right hamad ba rek am 72 or so ñi ci de sep sen 70 yi indi sa sane luñ ndax lolu mo ne wut ne hidna bëggon nañ kenen ku dud yow mba ku oje at hamana oje taxawal na wa wa kon bëggon hidna yow bir bay sa bëggu ñu won nga nek sen parti li rabe because sa 70 yi nga indi sa ñep sane luñ la naka nga gisé lolu wa xey dañ doon dimbalé e process ndax ñu mëna tan nit ñun jëmu ñoo ut ñuy wara andak ñun pour khalifa sall nek candidat bi ñun liñ doon bëgg moy nañ tan nit li nga lacc nonu mën nañ ci wax lu bari wala ñun dañu né loolu importantul ndax té ñun ni taxawal dara té bëgg mu aw yoon liñ ci ndam mu am du ñëwa di yak loolu eh loolu loolu benen tariikh la bu ñu wara waxtane suñu demé ba genn ci ñetti at yi loolu ñu séggat ko ndax bu ñu ñoo def dara lo xamné wa ñu ñoo ci loolu wa 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 bu ñu dara li xadjamal liñu liggey ndax liñu liggey lu rafet la won fog na né loolu na nek tontu wa what has been said is profound and uh, it is important to to interrogate it i think the first premise is wrong to believe that it is gambians as political parties and as a people who had faith in the opposition and said that they should form a coalition to bring about change in 2016 that is not a fact Gambians had no hope in the opposition. Gambians were campaigning that the opposition in the Gambia is useless and the people should take another approach to remove Jammy. The wave four months before the second as first December 2016 presidential election was a wave for a mass uprising. It was not a way for election. And Gambia should be honest. They should accept that they never believe, 99.9% .9 of Gambia never believe that change could come through the ballot box on the 1st of December 2016. That is the fact. So what came about in 2016 was a process. We started a process that we believe by analyzing society that yes, that process will ultimately yield the results we anticipated. So you talk about theory. That's exactly the scientific base of the coalition. I called the meeting of the presidential candidates, not the political parties, at Kaira Babich. Because I knew that the presidential candidate had vested interests. 
And if we sit down, it is just counting those who will opt out. Those who will opt out and eventually whoever will agree to continue will continue. That was the tactic employed. Some didn't want to accept to participate in the discussion. They went and did their own campaign. But the people continued to tell them that if it is about election, uh, then you must be together. That's when the idea came. People said, well, if it is about election, then you must be together. Because no single party can actually remove the incumbent from office. So you see the strategy, yes, theory, <laughs> but a theory becomes a material force when it grips the minds of the people. And that's precisely what we did, to tell the people that change is conceivable through the unity of the parties. And because of that wave was going, and the information was going, circulating, some fighting, but it was going, it was gripping the minds of people to a point that all the parties, all the aspirants, when you go to the people, the people will say, go to the negotiating table. Mm -hmm. Then we saw that it was now right to call everybody, all parties, all the uh, people who had ever talked about unity, bring all of them together, and that's what we did. That's why on the 17th of October, 2016, yes, there were some people who opted out, but the vast majority accepted to be in, and we signed an agreement to establish coalition 2016 and scheduled to hold a convention on the 30th. Of October. Look at, look at the time frame. And go back to social media and see what people were saying. The Halifa Salah, the theories, etc. Fine. <laughs> uh, for, it does not matter. But what matters is that our route is clear and it delivers the ultimate objective. And that's precisely what happened. We selected a presidential candidate and accepted but that presidential candidate in order to win the confidence of everybody so that we have faith that a new Gambia will emerge. The person will not stand for any political party, mm -hmm. will stand as an independent candidate, will be there for three years, will not stand in the next following election. Those were core values that made everybody to agree because we were struggling to defeat self-perpetuating rule. 30 years, 22 years, we said that enough was enough. No more self-perpetuating rule. We'll amputate it constitutionally by agreeing to a two-term mm -hmm. limit, which we will put in the constitution that is agreed upon, okay. that this coalition will bring about two-term. Yeah. And that is the change that has been effected to ensure that we establish a barrier for self uh, At any time during your negotiation, did you guys um, spoke about the formation of a government? If, in case you become... Well, it is anticipated that a government will be formed that is a coalition government well, because... Everybody will participate. Right? Well, when you say everybody, what I'm saying, these are processes. Okay. You know, processes taking place, nobody is excluded. Mm -hmm. I think nobody should really uh, feel that anything wrong has been done because nobody is excluded. I think your issue now is why Halifa Salah or any member of, of Doi fail. I think that is, that is, that is the issue. Yes. But we are not talking about exclusion per se. Yeah. Maybe you must have, well, some people have been given more than others. You know, one can look into the issue of equity. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't hear anybody complaining about it. At least from Doi's point, <laughs> we are not complaining about equity. Mm -hmm. But uh, others may complain about equity. But that's really not the issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that is the fundamental difference between Doi's conception of the coalition and others. Because we did not see this as a cake that we were sharing. And generally coalitions are built on that foundation, sharing of a cake with equity for everybody to benefit. For us, this was not a cake. We were not trying to have said anything to eat. We saw a process of ensuring that for the 52 years, for the first time in Gambian history, the Gambian people will assert that sovereignty resides in them. Mm -hmm. That that was missing. 
That is what Doyle has always taught. And that was the beginning for us of the democratic foundation of the nation. So in short then, uh, we aspire to what we agreed that the president to be will prove to people he has no hunger for power, will limit his term of five years, genuine term, constitutional term of five years, but will up to resign in three years and then we go back to election. That would require, of course, a constitutional amendment of ensuring that when a president resigns, dies, or the office of president becomes vacant, you will have election within 90 days. You know, so, so in short then, uh, that was the basis. Now, why haven't we accepted ministerial posts? Well, clearly, in 2011, if you talk to uh, Honorable Hamad Ba, he would say that we were part of a united front. If you talk to uh, Honorable Henry uh, Gomez, they will tell you that that's precisely what we put on the table, that if the gentleman won an election, will not be part of the cabinet, will be at the National Assembly, they will tell you that. So, and we'll give reasons for that. We are saying that our position, I had even put to the Inspector General of Police, we had, we, and still do not have a law that protects a president-elect. So when President-elect Barrow was President-elect Barrow, and outgoing President Jami was still at the State House, I went to the Inspector General of Police on behalf of the president-elect. And the first comment I made to, to, and of course he had to call all his uh, command and control staff, and I told them that, you see, I have no vested interest. That is an issue of integrity. That is to win their integrity, that you have nothing to gain so that they will believe you. So I told them, you see, for me, I have no vested in Even the ministerial post, I will, I will not hold. So therefore, if we allow this situation to deteriorate and something happens to this president-elect, we would have lost the Gambia. And if we, on the 18th, you continue to support the incumbent, then we'll have a war in this country. And in that war, you'll be treated as rebels. You'll be losers. So therefore, it is important to protect the president-elect. That responsibility was carried out and using this whole mechanism of not holding a ministerial post, in fact, as an instrument of building confidence and integrity. Then why didn't we accept ministerial post? For us, we say that this is a transition of three years. Mm -hmm. Halifa Sal has been telling the farmers of the Gambia, instead of social security using its for 400 million to go and buy ocean bay, which should be left to a private sector, what should the government do with, with tourism? You, it, is, it is a private sector investment uh, in a domain. You know, use that to ask, establish a cooperative that will, a cooperative bank that will give the farmer farming implements, seeds and fertilizer to expand their production of their family farms. Mm -hmm. Because families have huge farms. Mm -hmm. But because of the absence of these inputs, they cannot produce so that we can have full self-sufficiency. We've been telling farmers that. Mm -hmm. We've been telling the young people that 400,000 people are coming from our school system, that jobs are inconceivable unless we start processing our groundnuts into oil, uh, processing our tomato into paste, our milk into all this process. So we've been telling people that this is how we intend to create jobs. Yeah. Now here you are with Halifa Salah in a transition government. Mm -hmm. With all the expectations that this is what is going to happen. And three years, you do not see the factories emerging. You do not see a cooperative bank, you know, to the farming community. What are the farmers going to say? What are the young people going to say? Obviously, they're going to say, we have been betrayed by this man who has given us hope. So, you see, we don't want to build false hope. We are saying the transition is precisely meant to ensure that we have instruments, constitutional instruments, that were adopted will now be healed, sanitized, so that the constitutional instrument will now be the byproduct of our collective. Can I, can I come in here? 
Yeah, meaning, yeah. if I understand what you're saying, meaning, uh, meaning um, Halifa did not believe in this coalition from day one. No, I think this is where the error no, is. Because, no, let me, let okay, me, let me, no, yeah, what I'm saying, yeah, okay, no, okay, let me, okay, let me, okay, let me, yeah, no, yeah, let me, yeah, let me I'm just saying, because, yeah, yeah. because if Halifa was part of this government, all these things you wanted for the farmers, all these things you were saying you wanted, could have been a starting point, at least a foundation could have been built if you were part of this government to help lay those foundations. Because this government, like Daddy always say, is not going to be the one that will take us to where we want. Mm. It's just going to set a basic mm. foundation. Mm. But if you are not part of that process of setting up the foundation, that's where some of us have issues. Because I would love to interject before he comes back. Yes, yes, thank you. I believe, and it's my fervent belief, based on his assertions, mm -hmm. that all the Honorable Halifa Salah envisage was a regime change. Why a regime change? Mm -hmm. A regime change in the sense that he wanted Jame out. But see, we had two things that should have been concurrent. A regime change and a transformation process. Because there has to be a shift in paradigm. This shift in paradigm needs drivers. And he, Honorable Salah, should have been and must have been an integral part of being in the driver's seat. But guess what? He has mitigating circumstances that he was looking, well, this is still me, my opinion, a fail-safe arrangement. You cannot play politics and have a fail-safe arrangement. Why? He made pledges to farmers. He made pledges to peasants. He made pledges to school students, which I accept an honor. But see, politics, to a point, is a game of vested interest, but in this vested interest, there is what you call expediency. And this expediency must have warranted the Honorable Halifa Salah to stand up, rise to the occasion in terms of rebuilding, repositioning the new Gambia. You, in my opinion, have left the new Gambia to go adrift in the middle of a high sea. Your voice is a voice of reason. Your voice is a voice of tact. But sometimes politicians, politicians have vested interests that are not well pronounced. If you read between the lines, you know Halifa Salah is positioning himself for subsequent elections. Therefore, he doesn't want to be part of a dispensation that he doesn't have hope in other than the regime change it has effected. That's what well, I'm saying. Well, yeah. well, mm -hmm. Your questions have <laughs> at least there converged. Mm -hmm. well, let's interrogate uh, that very conception of the situation. A regime change, yes, that's what was anticipated. Because everywhere in the Gambia, wherever you go, I was a presidential candidate. That's when I gave those opinions. My program for the transformation of the country. Not only Gambia, but continental program for the <coughs> transformation of the country. We've told them that mining was taking place in Batokoku, Sanyang, uh, and Katong, and that nothing was evident of what was coming there. We will make sure that what it will be evident, and those people will have to have shares in order to build their communities from anything that is coming. So there were many promises as a presidential candidate, not as a coalition, as a presidential candidate. But then when we came to the coalition agenda, go everywhere in the Gambia. That's what you people were saying. Forget about ideas. Forget about solutions. What we want this man out. Isn't that what you, the Gambian people, had been telling Halifa Salah and the rest? That this is, as you are saying, you people are rigid. You are theoretical. These are all fanciful ideas. Talk about systems change, forget it. All we want, jam me out. You people said that. You made your clarion call. 
Halifa Sala Alsat and the Doy answer to your clarion call. Now you are blaming Halifa Sala for ad ad addressing your clarion call. And if you were conscious of what you wanted, then you would have demanded for programs that will be addressing your needs and aspirations. Demanded that unless that is part of the agenda, then you will not support the coalition. But that was not your agenda, Gambian people. Don't fool us now. <laughs> don't, don't, don't mislead the nation. Accept your weakness. Accept who you were as a Gambian people. Accept your desperation. What you wanted is jamme out. And you were using slogans that were unimaginable for a human being to use to show the level of your consciousness that honey you will not even if you bring a dog that is better than to leave that person there that's what you were saying yes. Yes. But, but. now we've addressed the issue of regime change let's bring you together show you a solution on the 2nd of december what you wanted happened yes so no one can indict halifa salah and doi we have delivered I totally agree with you. <laughs> so we have delivered. Now we have delivered and we are talking to our members everywhere in the world. Start being assertive to show how we have delivered. And that we need a new starting point. Where is the starting point? What we anticipated in this change as the coalition leaders, I had told them that even if we stop there, fine, we have achieved our aim. We can go our separate ways. What we told them is now we have moved from a coalition to a government mm -hmm. and that is what gambians do not conceive even if you are put up by a political party and you win an election it is not a political party that becomes a ruling party that's a misconception Absolutely. that's not the language of the constitution no, allow me, okay, I'll just finish here. Okay, I'll, I'm, I'll come to your point yeah. very soon. Okay. <laughs> I am saying that the political party only helps to give you the candidate mm -hmm. who ultimately is a very powerful person. <laughs> and Gambians must realize that. That is the executive power resides in the president. Mm -hmm. So once a coalition help or a party helps, you are bringing somebody into power. Uh, what are the APRC? Talk to people in PPP and APRC after their leaders became president, whether they will go and say, we are the party, so, you know, give. They, they decide. Mm -hmm. And they can put aside anybody that they want. So in short, we had executive power. And in order to prepare that executive power, on the 25th of December, the president-elect addressed this nation and told you that there was going to be an agency for sustainable socioeconomic development. There will be an expert bank. There will be a think tank. I volunteered initially to head that think tank to shape the architecture that will ensure that this regime change will deliver financial discipline the architecture of the economic base and social base so that within three years we will be able to provide to the Gambian people a better society that we inherited. That is the aim and that is still the aim. I am saying that when that was prepared, since there was some a statement issued, it's unfortunate, <laughs> Uh, and that is why I am saying this. Everybody has seen that I've always told people, all of us should help the executive president Barrow, who is not belonging to any political party. Let's make our contribution to ensure that we deliver regime change. Regime change, good governance, respect for rule of law, respect for fundamental rights and freedom, adherence to the rule of law, and building the democratic base of society. And that is the duty that President Barrow must undertake to ensure that the regime change achieves its fundamental objective. Its economic objective is to ensure that whatever is being inherited from the old state 
agriculture, for example, agriculture, 21% of GDP. If we go to, 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 to services, about 66% uh, of GDP. You go to industry, at least 13% of GDP. We are saying that that must be looked at. How do you improve the agriculture base? How do you improve the service? How do you improve the industrial base? All this could be improved. And financial discipline could also be in injected so that at least you improve services, schools, etc. We are there. That is why we are saying you don't need, because a minister is what? Somebody who exercises direction and control over a ministry. Mm -hmm. The other is just stating your opinion for the other ministers. We are saying let us be in the National Assembly where the budget is scrutinized, where policies will be scrutinized, where every aspect of the life of the country will be scrutinized. Yeah, so we believe that that is a better position. Now, if you go to the parliament and this administration happens to fail, Halifa is immune. Honorable Halifa Saleh is immune because Boko Machi, number one. Number two, this is the chatter going out there, and I want to be the devil's advocate. Halifa dafa ham luneka, dafa ham solutioni luneka. He's a Mr. Know-it-all. I believe, and when I talk, I talk based on my opinions that I think have veracity of fact based on my perception of what the reality is. I've listened to you shortly, and you, you were talking about mining in Batakunku and how communities must have shares into whatever is being mined. I believe resources coming out of any perimeter of what we call territorial Gambia belongs equally to all Gambians, irrespective of geographical position, whether you are in Tankular, Fototo, or Batakunku. It needs equity, and equity means total distribution across the board. Therefore, sometimes I do believe Honorable Salah means well. Honorable Salah is not only an opinion leader, but he's an opinion shaper. Gambians rely wholly and solely sometimes on you for guidance on certain issues. Therefore, there must be and there should be a duty of care. Mm -hmm. When people call you yes. to oh. step up rise to the occasion said okay this is not what you guys bargained for but, but for the interest of the greater good i halifa honorable halifa salah will step up to the plate and that's what i call decisive leadership and that's what i call responsive leadership but see politics sometimes turn us into beings that are inward looking based on our programs, our agendas, our aspirations, and our trajectory in terms of a roadmap, where and how Halifa Salah wants to achieve his ends through his means. I am just saying simply that the Gambia has called on you to serve not at the parliamentary level. I understand. Now at the parliamentary level, you are a gatekeeper towards our common good and common interest. Fine. But the greater good of society would allow you to be on that oval table at the presidency to be effective in their mindset. We are not you. You're a consenting adult, and you should do what you think is best in terms of where you want to see and take this country. If the parliament is the way forward for you, I bow. But as a Gambian, and my state of mind reflecting most, would have said, Halifa is running away from responsibility because tomorrow he doesn't want to be quoted as one of or some of the people who failed the state. Politics and risk are things that go together. The more you want to mitigate it, the more you try to be reasonable. Face the challenge and live as the elder statesman you are. It is unfortunate. Just to add into it. Because if you are at the parliament right now, like the way the government is, you cannot even do much. We know that like, the parliamentarians we have, they would listen and they understand. But if you have a majority of a party that has 31 seats, that's already more than the number of, I mean, plus that's more than <coughs> plus the nominators, plus that's five nominated, right? So that gives you what? 35, 36. Whatever is tabled, 
and it doesn't favor that particular party or it doesn't favor government because we all associate the government to a certain party. Um, you being the gatekeeper there, would it make a difference? I doubt it very much because if whatever you table and then we don't want it to happen, it will not happen. So then it takes us back again to what Daddy was saying, that we all looked up to you. For me especially, I'm a young person and I've... I've always said, whenever, as Fatou has said, um, Honorable Halifa is coming on TV, we all sit down and we glue, we glue on our TVs to listen to what you have to say. You educate us, you teach us things that we've never even heard before, right? And then as Daddy said, I would say the same thing, and I've heard that before. Halifa Moham, yep. Halifa Moumoun, yep. Like, Halifa Bopam, like this. Which might not be true. It might be true to some people. That's their opinion, and they're entitled to it. But um, we wanted you to be that responsible Halifa, Honorable Halifa Salah, that we all believe you are. If, because for me, when they said, um, coalition is okay fine they sit getting the ministers i said he has to be the minister of finance no, we have well he has to be the minister of, of health yeah. he has to be the minister of women's affairs education education we know that you are not the type that says i agree yes sir yes sir we know that you're not the yes sir yes sir person and then that yes sir yes sir person that you are not would take me back a little bit i have this thing i want you to really clarify for me and i guess for a lot of people as well when you were the, because it has been announced that you are an advisor to the president. I'm not sure on what, but you were an advisor to the president, right? Yeah. At the initial stage. And then that, yeah. we had this issue of a vice presidency, right? And then we were saying the age limit, this and that, right? Then you came out and said it has to be gazette. I stand to be corrected, right? And then it should not be done this way, it should have been that way. For me, I was saying, if you are the spokes, I mean, if you are the, an advisor to the president, what, it must be two things. One, are you telling us that you were not consulted before that announcement was made that this Mrs. Jalo Tamajang is the vice president or whatever the issue was, the age limit? Or two, you were consulted, you gave them your advice and they didn't listen to you. So that was the reason why you came out and said, this is how it should be done for everybody to know. Because I believe certain things, they need to be done around table. That's why you're an advisor. That's why you have the you know, ministers and people around the president. It's not something that should be out there that should be argued for everybody to be like, Halifa Mune, Nombara Mune, Dusanga Mune. So for me, I'm thinking you were consulted and you just chicken out and said, no, it's okay. And then you come out and said, no, they should have not done that. Because there's a lot of people right now, especially people in the diaspora, everything Halifa Salah says is correct. It's by <laughs> Everything Halifa Salah says is what we have to do. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was saying, okay, he's looking at the next three years, the next five years, because I believe you want to be president. <coughs> And I know you can be a good president. So he's trying to move from the whole noise, be the one that will come out when everybody says this is how it should be done. He would come and educate us on what the constitution has said. But why didn't he educate them on what the constitution has said? It's inside, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Well, I think uh, <laughs> it's very good that we have arrived at something very practical to analyze. We are talking about the functioning of the cabinet on the baron. And what you have said will help me to address his concern. The issue of the vice presidency did not come when Barrow was then president. He was then president in Senegal, not in the in Gambian territory here in the Gambia. Uh, and consequently, there was a vacuum. A vacuum because the Constitution says that if something happens to the president, it's the vice president who takes over. And if something happens to the vice president, it is the Speaker of the National Assembly who takes over. And at that material time, the Speaker of the National Assembly was who? <laughs> was Goja. So... When you look at sensitivities, you do not make certain pronouncements because they have certain implications. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with the issue of whether Jami had broken into the central bank and taken money. You see, at that time, the inspector of police had been instructed to go to all government institutions to make sure that those who managed them kept everything intact. Intact does not mean that somebody has not taken it, but at least when you audit, you will discover what has happened and that person will be accountable. So if you just make that pronouncement and you have poor soldiers, poor, poor, poor police officers, you are telling them just go and break into the banks, 
take everything and then leave it to the children and just simply say, well, okay, it was looting. So everything was being kept intact. So in short, the issue of the vice presidency was communicated to the, to the president in Dakar so that the position will be filled. And he appointed the current person who is occupying the post. I did the announcement. When the announcement was made, the responsibility there is the president who made the decision. He does not have to ask me for an opinion as to who he is going to make vice president. It will be arrogant to tell him, no, you should not make somebody vice president. But when there is public outcry that the age is this, age is this, what did I do? The next day I held the press conference again and said that, well, this is what section 70 of the constitution says and based on what people are saying the president is likely to review all that and come up with a decision no i'm saying after the press conference after the appointment you know people there was an outcry yes. then i had to issue a statement a court or as the spokesperson for as the spokesperson of the president okay. to ensure that at least it does not go on him. That is, you take, that's what you call damage control. Okay. Uh, so you, you have to engage in damage control and then you have to, and so that was done. But then the president came back. Didn't you continue to cry out that the position of vice president is not filled? Mm -hmm. Did he feel it? Yeah. So if I was member of cabinet, what do you expect from me? To just accept to be minister? No. And go and receive ministerial salaries. What do you expect me to do? Our expectation was very simple. Yes. I believe Honorable Salah served a purpose and is still fit for that purpose. And that is being a voice of reason. We know you are principled. No, but, what, but what now I'm answering, I just want you to, uh, maybe I should not ask questions to a journalist, <laughs> but I'm saying when he refused to appoint, when the whole world said that the appointment should be made, but the president decided not to appoint. Well, I believe he had discretionary powers. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's and those discretionary based. powers, so long as they're not infringing on our constitution or creating an impasse within the constitution, which I don't know. I'm not a constitutionalist. Well, obviously, to have a vice president's position a vacant, and you are going to the National Assembly to start changing laws of 65 years, whether there is association or no, no association, does not reflect that that person has taken the views of those who felt that that position should not be vacant for any reason. Wonderful. So, okay. so, in short, so in short, I am saying that the executive is a very powerful position and don't create problem for the executive by feeling that you are so powerful that you can dictate to a president. I think that's where your shortcoming lies in actually saying that a person who is who people deem to be knowledgeable, which is just personality cult, should be there. You know, otherwise everything will go wrong. I think that is not really a correct conception. I think the correct conception is this that the executive is there. To be guided and what do you use to guide the executive is ideas and there could be formal and informal way of injecting those ideas you the media you are influenced you, you don't know how much you are influencing executive decisions quite agree yes, but um, we have a problem again um honorable yes yeah, um, but i'm coming again i'm saying in cabinet you are saying in parliament you are man in cabinet you are a minority and in the National Assembly, do you know the powers of National Assembly? I think the problem of Gambians is they don't know their National Assembly yes. and its yes. powers. Mm -hmm. The National Assembly, you can call any minister and ask any question and they have to answer. answer. Yes. The National Assembly has committees. Mm -hmm. And these committees serve as oversight to all institutions in the country. Absolutely. And when they exercise their jurisdiction in those committees, they have the power of a high court in ensuring witnesses must be subpoenaed and they must come there or be penalized.
That's how powerful the National Assembly is. So we are saying that that institution, wise in cabinet, the president can dismiss you anytime, can send you out anytime, marching orders, what can you do about it? You can do absolutely nothing about it. But in the National Assembly, the president cannot drive you away. <laughs> so in short, you have your premium by having the backing of the people, meaning you prefer being elected, therefore you're not answerable to anyone but the demos, the people. Precisely. And okay. Precisely. That, that and, and I think precisely <laughs> because this is regime change, we shield President Barrow by saying that independent candidate elected as president does not owe any allegiance to political parties cannot be blamed for anything because he did not put himself there we are the ones who put him there therefore how can Halifa at any time claim not to be accountable unless he can creatively Put before everybody else and said this is what I told the president but he refused to do it which means that Halifa becomes somebody who shack responsibility if he fails to continue to give the right type of advice and give the ideas that could be utilized by the cabinet and I believe that is precisely what we are doing now my whole tour in Europe, everywhere, we are calling on people to take ownership of the Gambia, to come and participate in its development process, mm -hmm. to ensure that when it comes to constitutional changes, we are going to be writing. They has already started to create a committee that will review the whole constitution and put its opinion you know, to, in the public space so that it becomes part and parcel of the whole process. You know, uh, during the AP uh, transition era, when we came with the constitution of the first, for, first uh, second republic, when we were debating it, we just took responsibility. At the end, people thought that we were part of the Constitutional Review Commission. Mm -hmm. People thought that we, we really bought a constitution yeah. because we were so active in interpreting, which is not our mandate, we just assumed. Once again, a responsibility. once again, the yeah. chatter. Yeah. Chatter. I always say chatter. Because mm -hmm. these are the nuances and noise pollutions that we hear on social media and sometimes in the vools, shops, markets in town. There's a personality clash between you and Honorable Dabo. You like it or not, perceptions are our reality, us Gambians. We believe that Nyari Kuyi Muninyo Bokambalka and Lita Munlena Bokambalka, Buga Buga Bibenala trajectory where you want to head, two, it's like a sibling rivalry. It's very unhealthy for our democracy. But it's very evident, when I say evident, it's well pronounced in the actions of both sides. And these two people are telling us, Gambia Monyu Nyor. Ni Gambia Nyor. They put personality aside and put Gambia first. Bunla Degate, sa, Tule Ndohmutilim, sa, Burutron Gambia, Dinalen Wan Lenin. That's the attitude yep. we expect from both sides. But it's a known fact. That's why I said chatter. It's all over. Mm -hmm. That these two quiz cannot share a same balka called That's the Gambia. The the yes. But the... when you look at the situation, mm -hmm. in 1992, it is C.D. who stood as a presidential candidate for Doi. In 1996, it is C.D. who stood as a presidential candidate for Doi. In 2001, it is Sidi Ajata who stood as a presidential candidate for Doi. I have never taken the position of being a candidate of Doi since Doi came into being. Mm -hmm. So Halifa Salah does not have any personal ambition to be the president of a country. You don't want to be a president? No, no, no. no you don't want to be a president? No, no. Well, well I think listen, listen to me very carefully now. I have giving you facts, <laughs> where if the position is just the position, 
then there would have been a conflict within the of people having aspirations and then uh, I think it is understood that it's therefore understood. Well I'm saying because I know that Mr. Sala is not only crafty but intelligent. Yes. He has been paving the way because you yeah. knew in two thousand and one Gambia was ready for doing. Equally in two thousand and six Gambia wasn't ready for doing. So whether you like it or not, you have been the poster boy of Doi. Well, Even yep. with your other leaders. So now, yep. the time is right for, him to for be Mr. Sala, Honorable, to be that big man to assert the goodwill and political dividend he has scored over the past 18 to 23 years. Well, yes. I, I will not even uh, <laughs> uh, interrogate that one, but I just want you to listen to me okay. to be able to answer your question. I said, You've seen those years, see the Jata. It's actually you did not hear any power struggle within Doi. No. I am simply saying that Honorable Davo is the leader of a political party whose fundamental objective is to take over and manage the affairs of the country. Absolutely. There is nothing wrong with that. And there is nothing wrong for him to go in the public space to promote the interests of his party. Mm -hmm. Quite again. And I believe that there has never been an obstacle to that. So it is unfair to Doi or Talifa Salah to say that there is some personality conflict because nobody had ever seen Halifa Salah or Doi not promoting for all political parties to exercise their rights and not collaborating with them to struggle for electoral reform and even taking the opportunity that we had for leadership and sacrifice it in order to promote the sovereignty of the people. In 2002, I was a presidential, I was a, a National Assembly member. Up to 2004, I was a member of the Pan-African Parliament. They called us for a discussion to be able to form an alliance. I accepted to be part of that formation. We even lost our seats, stood again and won, and still persisted to continue. And persisted to continue to the point of being arrested. I remember uh, when I was arrested here on the night, I had spoken to all the committees of the Council of Europe, all their caucuses, irrespective of ideological position. And they were so convinced, because I was a member of the Pan-African Parliament, myself and another parliamentarian from the South African Parliament, the two of us. They were so convinced that I was invited where then the President of the African Commission, uh, then uh, President Alpha Omar Konari, was invited to go to Belgium to address their federal parliament. So, but at that material time, I was arrested here as Doi. Yes. So clearly, if the interest was there, you simply promote Doi, why would we go into all that hassle in trying to back up? Why would we go in 2011 that I refused to participate to be a presidential candidate in 2011? If you say we were marking for time, why in 2016? did I also accept when Honorable Dabo was in prison. I think if you want to backstab somebody, that was the time to do so. To ensure that that person does not move out of that prison, it means that anybody connected to him, you make sure that you don't have any alliance with that person. Isn't that the way? I think Gambians should really begin to stop peddling fiction and concentrate on facts. When Honorable Dabo was in prison, the UDP leadership outside should tell the whole world the role that Halifa Salah and the rest of the party leaders played mm -hmm. in really giving support and defense for the release. And ultimately, it is somebody who hailed from the UDP who became the presidential candidate of a coalition. 
So essentially, we have done absolutely nothing to UDP and absolutely nothing to Honorable Davo for him to hold Halifa Salah as his adversary. And not only that, during the impasse, what was the game? Halifa Salah was not going to be a minister. <laughs> but then Halifa Salah stuck his neck. He would have been the human shield. Everywhere he spoke, they will close the radio station. Those who were concerned with Halifa Salah's life said, hey, we are ready to move you out of this country within seconds and minutes because you are not safe. But Halifa Salah was there speaking to the members of the armed forces of the Gambia, speaking to the, all the security apparatus so that on the 18th of January, all of us collectively will reclaim the inviolability of our constitution and inviolability of the results of the elections. And that is what happened. That happened, mm -hmm. you know, uh, organizing everybody. We are talking about, many people are still uh, oblivious of what happened because I hear some people saying, well, uh, economic protected, etc. You see, the peace that we enjoy today is an internal creation. The external was just an influential factor. But the peace that we enjoy today, if those who supported the APRC went into the street, there will be civil war. But after the 18th, everybody went to their home, irrespective of party affiliation. Mm -hmm. After the 18, all the security apparatus knew that that was the end of the incumbent. Mm -hmm. And they showed loyalty to civil authority. Mm -hmm. After the 18, the ambassadors all decided to abandon. So in essence, we are saying that we have created a country that could have a new start. And the starting point of that, let me remind every Gambian, is that when Jammeh accepted the results and appointed Nandabu uh, Bala Jahumpa to be his uh, intermediary, I was selected by uh, the, the then president-elect, Honorable uh, Baro, and then our first negotiation was to free the political prisoners. Which... So in essence, uh, and if after the impasse, if those prisoners were not released at that time, don't you envisage that they would have been the first human shield that, mm -hmm. that, that you utilize? So in short, really, I think uh, we must accept that DOI is a party, UDP is a party, uh, uh, Honorable Davo is an honorable person, Halifa Salah is a person of his own. We, we do not share anything. Uh, nothing uh, is in conflict. I'm not holding a ministerial post, so we are not competing for me. What are we competing? Minds the and hearts. No, we are, we, <laughs> you, you cannot compete for the presidency. <laughs> You see, that, that is why I'm saying that Gambia's level of consciousness is so low. The presidency is something that you cannot compete no, for. No, let me come. Have yeah, when, let me come. When people let me come. of let me your statute believe yeah, that yeah. our level of consciousness it's is so that low. low. You know what Gambians say? Yeah. Halifa is intellectually intolerant. Yes, to and arrogant. Ideology. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Call me arrogance and I'll accept it there. I say that the level is so low because two people cannot clash for the presidency because none of them can have that presidency without the mandate of the people. Absolutely. What those two people can do is to compete for the hearts and minds of the people. Yes. That is what we must put. And unless we understand that, we will continue to believe that somebody has conflict with another. As far as I'm concerned, there is no single Gambian in this country that is my enemy. There is no single Gambian who I will not fight for if your right is being violated. Amen. That's I have shown. When the witchcraft thing came, I have gone to places and the people I saw, I went to some of these homes, they had the picture, big light picture of the president at that time in their homes. But their grandfathers and fathers were arrested and taken. I had to fight for them and put my stick, my life for them. So what I'm saying, the type of uh, image yeah. that people want to give Halifa Salah as somebody who has this ambition 
and will do anything to uh, do anything to get that ambition. Make it ambition. And not only is it false, but it has been proven by fact to be untrue. Because in all those circumstances, I could have died. Challenging people who are giving uh, hallucinogenic drugs to other people, it could have been given to me, and I will die. I spent two weeks at mile two, maximum security, in their hands. I could have been eliminated. During the impasse, what stopped me from being eliminated? Because you're loved by all. No, no, but I was in my home. I'll tell you why. No. Because a lot of people believe that Halifa is not a threat. So Halifa will not be touched. So if you notice from Yaya Jame's time or up to now, Halifa is like one politician that can actually stand out and challenge Yaya Jame and pretty much nothing really comes out of it. Because everybody but, but believes that I was Halifa, arrested. yes. No, 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 but in that, I was you were, in prison, a witchcraft. I was in prison yes, but if when you we challenged the coup. No, but I, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to say, you see, some people try to build that image. Also. Yes, that's what's built, actually. But I'm saying... The image, the threat has always been yeah, there. Absolutely. Like, I was have... ready to shoulder the threat. And you must see that uh, there is a law of chance. And of course, the approach is taken. Because if you want to eliminate somebody, you must have a just cause to do that. You know, you can go up to a level, you see, well, what will be the implication of eliminating? What That's many many foreigners used to ask me that question. What is it? Why are you? I said, well, if your life is the same with the life of the other person, knowing that if you are eliminated, that will be the end of the life of that person. Maybe the person will think twice before that elimination. I now, think that's my security. Yeah, uh, now, moving forward, um, we have seen a lot of politicians, you, all other political <laughs> leaders, campaigning. This is a transition period. Like you said, all hands should be on deck to help build the foundation that we're looking forward to in the next government. Everyone is politicking. No one is walking. How are we going to achieve the Gambia that we are all yearning for if everybody is on the road politicking? Is this the time to politic, Honorable al -Fasala? Well, uh, it depends on, as he had uh, said, uh, what was the agenda on the drawing board? Mm -hmm. If that is not interpreted the way you interpret it, of course, you will have what you are having. We reap what we saw. Uh, some of us conceive that agenda to have been a three-year transition where when it comes to National Assembly election, you stand as an independent National Assembly member, so there is no distinction to party. When you come to council election, you stand as independent council, so that during this three-year period, we will all work just to consolidate the architecture of a third republic its constitution, its institution, its normative practices, and the sovereign Gambian, all of us being together, one Gambia, one nation, one people, and then the media open to all the divergent views, everything criticized, so everything is built up, then we emerge as a new nation. That is uh, the conception. Utopia. Well, as you said, rightly, if that is not in the mind of everybody, mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, through uh, discussion, dialogue, and uh, negotiation, we do not manage to institutionalize that. Because we could have said that for a president to stand as an independent candidate was utopian. But then the material condition made it absolutely necessary for all to agree. Because failing to agree would mean the yeah. ultimate consequences of sacrificing your whole existence. So in short, uh, we managed to transform a utopia into a reality. We could have continued to transform that utopia into reality, but we have not. A very so, Frankenstein reality, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not soothing yeah. to the Gambia. Yeah. I agree with you that yeah. we mm. yearn for regime change, mm. and that's where the buck stopped. Yeah. And After I, regime change, yeah. being the human beings we are, we mm. wanted more. Mm. But you know what? Our basket could not have held anything more than regime change. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to be honest that your we coalition be honest. was an unholy alliance. The reason why I said unholy, there is nothing in terms of unanimity amongst the parties that came together for a coalition other than the common denominator that all Gambians shared 
and that was to get rid of the butcher we knew as Yaya Jami. Other than that, you know what? That you know that well, call it a holy, holy alliance. You know what that will interpret as well, meaning the three, the three years that they agree on. If everything else is not being honored, meaning that maybe the three years also might not be honored. Because right now we have seen some people say, "No, we're going for five years." For me, I think they well, just agreed so that they would, have, as Daddy said, everybody. Because apparently we have heard that Halifa said. If we're not going for the three years, I might. Like, not you said it, but then people had the belief that if they didn't agree, that the three years was your idea, right? And if people didn't agree <laughs> with that, Doi will Perception. walk away, yeah? And if Doi walks away, it means it's the end of the whole coalition. So, yes, they had to go by that. They had to agree because that's what everybody wanted. And then for that reason, now that they've got what they wanted, hey, let's back out. Well, I think uh, that would be a bit simplistic in the sense that uh, it did not happen that way. We met on the 18th of October to have an agreement, but we also established committees. There was a committee on good governance, and we injected in the agreement that the outcome of the discussions of the committees will form part and parcel of the agreement. So there was a committee, and I don't want to mention names. Yeah. It was not Halifa Salah who, who was chairing that committee. It was not any day person who was the secretary of that committee. Uh, but the committee came to the decision that we should have three-year transition. For us, I, I, I said it, go back to the convention. I said I will serve for two years. And if I serve for two years, I will not have served as a day president, president. I would serve as a coalition president, and there will be no day agenda in terms of economic or any other uh, domain. It would have been a regime change. I would have guaranteed the type of utopia that we are talking about now. That is what I would have promoted. That is to ensure that we build institutions, instruments, and practices and uh, uh, sanitize everything. That, that would have been my objective. Not a long-term plan. And in two years, that would have been my end as a president of a country. That, that was what I promised at that time. But essentially now, mm -hmm. what we are now saying is that there was an unholy alliance. No, there was a holy alliance to bring people together to have an independent candidate, and all that has been implemented. So if there are all holy practices, it is an after effect <laughs> of the holy alliance. <laughs> so I'm simply saying yeah, that the alliance was holy, everybody conceived it, everybody uh, eventually accepted it, who wanted change, and we brought about the change uh, that was so much appreciated in the world yeah. that has healed Gambia's image all over the world and unholy alliance will not bring about that healing. We succeeded. Yes. We've achieved and I think that is brings about a new starting point and I agree 100% with him let's accept the facts that the new starting point is that people want to go their separate ways and seek the mandate of the people in their own way. Amen. That is the reality. That's the fact. Now, the fact that mm -hmm. should also be borne in mind is that President Barrow is elected on an independent ticket. All of us now, the Gambian nation internationally, must focus on this personality and say, don't follow these parties. Mm -hmm. Leave them to go. Mm -hmm. Stick to your mandate. Be loyal to the Gambian people. Mm -hmm carry out the regime change program, constitutional reform, institutional reform, financial discipline, open up the economy, Gambians come, invest anywhere, protect them, no witch hunting, no violation of the constitution, open up the media, let the RTS be there for people to express divergent views, but do so under the law. So essentially, be that character mm -hmm. who will manifest the new Gambia. That is your solution. If he does that, you will have a new Gambia and the unholy alliance will not emerge <laughs> because they will not have the strength to be able to do so. That? Do you believe he's doing that right now? It's, well, nine months. it's been nine months. Well, he has tried at the beginning. 
-hmm. But as you move further, 72 hours detaining somebody, you said he's military, that's why he's detained, and therefore you have a security excuse. That's not the solution. So you must bear in mind that you, as a president, mm -hmm. must be ready to take certain risks when it comes to respect your school, respecting your constitution. Mm -hmm. So in short, there are many, many issues that are still, for example, throughout the years of Jammu, some of these parties will tell you this is a soldier's constitution, this bad constitution. But now, uh, this is a constitution that must go for another uh, almost nine months have passed, another one year, eight months, before you actually work on the constitution. So, the, what were you criticizing really about that constitution? What made it a soldier's constitution? Are you going to run a soldier's regime then for the period? So, it's, it just shows you when people are not honest with facts. You tie yourself down. And at the end of the day, we don't discuss about issues. But I am saying it's not late mm -hmm. for him because we still are the, the darling of the world. Mm -hmm. Gambia is still there. Mm -hmm. I beg to defer. No, you had a big window of opportunity in December, January, whereby a donor can even pledge without getting a document from you because they were interested and they were romanticized by the word New Gambia. Those opportunities have been squandered because we now see the emergence of a new crony capitalism in our country, whether we like it or not. And that's not good. We are now seeing, like you said, people being arrested without due process of the law. And that's what we fought for. We are now seeing Occupy Westfield, for instance, and we are using the lame duck traditional national security implication, which to me is a vague veil that needs to be streamlined and narrowed. So, is that what we as a people collectively bargain for? My answer is an emphatic no. Can we change that? Yes, provided the likes of Honorable Halifa stands and want to be counted where it matters the most. I must again emphasize, with all the emphasis at my command, the risking arrogance, <laughs> that we have not lost mm -hmm. the spirit of being the darling of the world. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I have been, the question how Gambia change without bloodshed. Yes. Yep. Everywhere I have been. Mm -hmm. Because all the ambassadors predicted bloodshed. Yep. All the major media houses of the world predicted bloodshed. All the intelligence houses of the world predicted bloodshed. So we did it. We've seen that when Jammu left this country, Ekomo did not come in immediately. No looting, no killing of each other. Everything kept intact. And when President Barrow was coming to the Gambia, look at the multitude. He was welcomed like no other human being had ever been welcomed anywhere in the world. So in essence, he has a duty to reflect on that and maintain that. That's what I'm saying. Yes. We have not lost that yet. Mistakes, missteps, when this sterilized issue occurred. I emphasize that security cannot be abstract. Security is concrete. When you have people arms, I, I, I emphasize. Jambo was here at the state house with all the weapons. Mm -hmm. Kazamas was there. Mercenaries who could come in were, were there. If, so everything was there. Mm -hmm. Why would that person leave the state house for people to come and take all those weapons? And then now you want to come back to the back door to take over power in the Gambia. That's... that's, that's <laughs> Thank you. That's not common sense. Anybody who thinks security in that way, then something, you should go back to the ABCs.
So security must be concrete. That is, people who are ready to go to the state house and to uh, you know take over Barrow, you say, well, this is a threat. Use any means to protect him. State institution. But this is where people in Kenya lie, marching. Even if you leave them to walk 10 kilometers and give them water, they will be uh, seen as, as, as a savior. So that, you don't call that a security threat, you call that civil disobedience. So civil disobedience, you don't use that type of situation that leads to the death of a person. No. And I've emphasized that, that before economic forces came in, everything was stabled. So they came in because the president sees that his security as a state requires the support of the sub-region. Fine. But what do you do? You humanize those troops. You send them to border villages if you feel that there is any threat in those border villages so that at least they will be able to provide health services and other services. And by providing those other services that will enable them to be endeared to the population. That is how you address those security situations. Now, with this thing, like young people, you have to continue to talk to them. Yes. The energy problem is a major problem. Yes. And people feel it. So what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. That is really what is important. So it means that you must be able to engage because yeah, yeah, it was be able to engage because of the fact that in many instances you will be able to see the difficulties of a particular society. Energy, long problem. You examine what percentage can you provide now and the limitation of providing it. If you go to Batoko Kusanyal, they're using, you know, wheel wheels. You can look at all those and see how much they can generate, how much you can buy from them to inject it into your nexus. So by injecting it into your nexus, they are very easy to address the electricity problem in a short term and work towards a major term to solve the problem. So in short, what I'm trying to say is this government needs to be very open to the population. And if it utilizes, for example, that, hey, we were put here to be here for three years to run a transition, to make your country better, to help build this institution, then people will definitely see the need to cooperate, to listen, to know what is realistic, and you start behaving that way. But it means that your practice must also be in line yeah. with your <laughs> words. If that happens, then you will be able to save the country, and we can save the country. Finally, Rolf Saba, recently you were on tour. Uh, first, we want to talk about the tour. Uh, how was it? You met so many Gambians. What are their reflections? What do they think about the new Gambia? But also, um, there was this famous uh, press um, release um, that came out when you made a, um, a statement about regime change and system change. First, we want to know what's your relationship now and what's the status of that um, press release and the, ref and, the, and the response. What's your relationship with the government, especially the president? Oh, I think everybody knew the role I played and knew that uh, people have high mm -hmm. regard and when people have high regard for you, you must have high regard for them. Uh, there is no confrontational relation mm -hmm. between Halifa Salah and anybody in the government. Some of the people that some people even identify to be, you know, uh, really hostile to Halifa Salah. And so in reality, uh, some people do consult me on many issues. And, and, and we do address those issues. I think I'm listening to. Uh, I believe that uh, as a result of, um, it will be unfair to talk about immaturity, uh, maybe oversensitivity. Uh, you know, a journalist's interpretation of what I said was over-exaggerated and uh, decided to respond to that, which is not really uh, something that... Uh, uh, a state house should do because we've already have an inter-party committee where we said that the position of the presidency should be deemed to be a position of respect and that we should respect that position and the presidency should respect the rights of all the other parties also to hold the government accountable you know to the people that is really what we need i i, I had 
analyze the situation, showed that the press release uh, cannot even be taken seriously. It was not signed by the Secretary General. And if it was signed by the Secretary General, of course, it will be a contravention of Section 222 of the Constitution. We provide a, conduct, a code of conduct for public servants. And uh, I've, I've dealt with all that. And I'm working on it so that, uh, in fact, uh, many developments are going to take place uh, by tomorrow uh, in terms of the inter-party committee, how we are going to work with the security forces and GRTS, and I'm sure a press release may emanate from that. So in essence, uh, my role in Gambian society now is to ensure that the change is not owned by a president, by a minister, by a political party, but the change is owned by the Gambian people. Yes. Uh, that, 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 uh, during my tour, that's what I emphasize to the Gambian people, that don't take, because once you surrender the Gambia to somebody, yeah. then we have lost everything. Yeah. So let's not do that, because there is no tribal treasury. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you cannot say that uh, there is a Mandinka treasury, a Jola treasury, a Sarukule treasury, a Wall of treasury, a treasury, where if you are poor, you go there for them to provide you with resources and, and to end your poverty. We have a national treasury. So no matter what people say about tribalism, we must reject the notion because it cannot have an economic foundation. It cannot have a foundation of eradicating poverty or enhancing liberty for any people. So we must continue to nurture the nation of being a people, a sovereign people, whose sovereignty uh, we must safeguard. And, and that's, that's what my tour uh, really serves, that we must engage in a national campaign to assert the sovereignty of the Gambian people so that we deal a, a dead blow to tribal notions in politics, any religious bigotry in, 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 in politics, and allow people to take charge of their nation and make decisions on the basis of informed choice. That, that is a movement that we must build, not only by political parties, but the Gambian nation as a whole. And in terms of political parties, all of us must make a choice. Political parties have program, go and look at their program and support the political party of your choice. Even though all are campaigning, that need not bring any form of, 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 of divisive uh, uh, relation in society. Follow the political party of your choice based on your understanding that it will serve your interest today or tomorrow. I believe that is the way forward. Thank you very much, Honorable Alifa. What are we there now? Yeah, finally, that Alifa, um, I think mm. one thing has happened. Mm -hmm. The coming of age of Honorable Halifa Salah has arrived. Mm -hmm. Politics as usual that he used to play oh. has been buried. And guess what? Yeah. He's ah. welcome home. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Yes. I know, right? Ah, money. Biru-biru political Halifa. Politics is organic. Mm -hmm. And he has also heard the clarion call of the people. Yep. Yeah. And he is now playing ball. Uh -huh. He oh, yeah. is trying to stop being that teacher. See, uh -huh. you cannot teach people. You have to effectively listen. But another thing has happened that I'm sure he knows and uh, he'll do something about it. The youth dividend in Gambia has been shown by all parties, yours included. Not to say you don't have youth membership, but we are yet to see Gambian youth being well placed in the political dispensation of this country, your party included. They may be the rank and file of your party, but we hardly see them where it matters most. Well, I think uh, we will not uh, say anything to the contrary. We will allow uh, facts to prove and practice to prove because no nation has a future without its young. Yes. And no party has a future without its young. I think that argument must continue, must be built. And as you said, we are listening and we are hoping uh, that uh, young people are also uh, uh, ready to take charge. And I believe they are. Uh, what I have seen before my own eyes uh, in our own party is that uh, the young people of the country are ready to take charge. I was 16. When I made a commitment, I don't see why uh, any 16-year-old or somebody younger would not also be able to make a commitment. And all my life, I finished my 
studies at the age of 22, the bachelor's degree at the age of 22, and I made a commitment, uh, a second commitment, to read, to understand uh, from all societies, and then decipher. Uh, and I believe that the young people must now do that. Let them take charge, uh, and, and, and we'll be ready to support them. Just that because man, the Order <laughs> 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 so I'm very honored to talk same platform newspaper. But just one more thing. Said the young need to be told. But I paper, I miss it. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Uh, he gave me an appointment and tell the Fujigas doctor, right? No fee. So, Lul the phone a commitment. Mom, Lumbuga, Sayonega, then Korea, Mom, Mom, Mom is always ready to talk to us. Honestly, no one can do it. I have a simple GRT, a simple education forum. I have a mom, I have an auntie, I have a job. He's always ready. Thank you for coming. I think we have to take a look at this. I think we have to take a look at this. I'm going to talk to you on YouTube, Facebook. GRT is living here. You are not on YouTube. You are not on YouTube. You are full interview. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You are an objectivity. Television <laughs> 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 Bon, la kichi wara tog di laite, wana neka kwa hamne ki yusu yi laite, di na laite li neka chi bopi li ni, li neka chi lame nyi li ni. Thank you so much, thank you, thank you so much. That was good. Yeah, that was very good. Thank you, I'll see you next week, inshallah. Good night.